Hello, so we're back. And now I'm going to hand over to Alan, who is our super international guest calling in from Canada today. Hello, everybody. That was a short introduction, Fina. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready, so if that's all you have. I'll, I'll that's all I have. Here. Well, I could like I could say I could talk about like how I met you. Uh, I I believe we met. No 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 no, no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Can tell the story of how we met. <laughs> well, that was in Seattle. Yeah. At the hex conference there. Exactly. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll get going. My name is Alan Dowdswell. Uh, I have my own company, Confidant Communications. I work in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in Canada. And uh, I'm going to be talking about Glory Framework. Um, this is, it started out as um, kind of a hobby project. Uh, it was actually because I was thinking of uh, publishing some limericks of all things, and, and I wanted to do it in a non-conventional way. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I could do an app uh, and uh, publish it that way. Well, um, the long story short is uh, I never published that, but I did continue work on Glory Framework. It, uh, I was just looking at my code base and the first commit was in uh, 2012. So um, it hasn't been under uh, heavy development, but I have been plugging away at it to the point where uh, I've built an interesting professional project with it and it seems to be working well. So uh, I thought, uh, it's at least worthy of a show and tell. So um, I can uh, tell you a little more about that. I guess I uh, would be sharing a screen right away. I'll just do that. Okay. Can you see, see my logo I made? All right, so um, the... Uh, Glory Framework is, uh, it's heavily inspired by um, Gaia Framework, which I started using uh, back when I was doing Flash. And uh, that was uh, used a lot with Flash developers for building uh, complete websites. And uh, what I really liked about it was that <clears throat> it would, uh, all the pages of the uh, website or the application were defined in this XML file. And uh, I kind of took that idea and uh, carried it over to uh, what I was doing with, with Gaia framework. Um, so uh, if you've ever used that before, you likely uh, would see a bit of similarity as far as inspiration. Now I'm just, uh, so uh, it runs on OpenFL. And uh, as such, uh, it can take advantage of all the different libraries that are available in OpenFL. Um, I myself uh, have success successfully used it with Away3D and with Feathers UI. And uh, out of the box, it uses a couple other uh, very useful libraries, which uh, I will mention as we go on. I've uh, made an effort to document it to uh, some extent. Um, the, all the source code is on GitHub and uh, I'll provide a link to that at the end of the presentation. So, uh, like I said, uh, it started out planning on being an app and I did get it on my iPod at one time, but uh, now it's uh, more heavily following uh, my needs for uh, building a website out of it. Um, as I mentioned, as file-based configuration. Uh, it supports all the assets that uh, OpenFL does. And uh, so you can prepare your artwork using Photoshop um, or Illustrator or even Inkscape. Um, it has the necessary technology built in to load those things. Uh, if you're cloning the repository and going through the examples, uh, there's uh, 
pages that use all, all of these things um, just to show you what's going on. So uh, I want to uh, flip over to, um, I'll just show you quickly kind of my ultimate usage of it. And uh, keep in mind that this is uh, something that is going beyond what frame, uh, what Glory uses, but uh, it's been a good uh, starting point to build an application on uh, without getting in the way, it just runs in the background. So uh, this uh, kitchen visualization tool for RTA um, is, is what I am currently working on right now. And uh, as far as Glory is concerned, uh, all these uh, navigations are glory pages. So if I uh, if I move on to island sizes, you can see that uh, the uh, the address changes in in the browser bar. It makes you. Uh, this is a very quick demo just to kind of show you what this will do. And at this point, uh, I'm realizing I should have lo loaded the uh, secure version of it, which uh, had a demo already, already prepared. Uh, the neat thing about this is that uh, it treats it like a real, a real web page in that it'll, it'll load the page that uh, directly depending on, on the address and the address bar. So uh, at any point, uh, let's say I'm working on it and uh, I change the data in the background, I can just hit a refresh on my browser and it'll go back to this page. Um, so this is basic. OpenFL stuff, and then uh, once you've configured your your kitchen, it'll render in the browser. Takes a little while to uh, load up the models, and then they eventually appear. And uh, there you have your three D kitchen. And from that point, you can uh, generate a quote, which uh, uses the uses the feathers UI, and uh, go from there. So uh, I present that just to kind of uh, give you an idea of what's possible with it. Um, I will uh, quickly do a demo on. Uh, on how to do a workflow uh, with Glory. So uh, supposing you've uh, cloned your repository. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. So uh, this window up here is uh, what, what the repository looks like. And uh, there's two, two examples in the examples folder. Uh, the website one is what I've cloned here. So I've cloned it and uh, this is the demo we're working with right now. Now I've, uh, I've emptied out the assets folder. Those of you uh, familiar with OpenFL know that that's standard for that. Um, I've prepared this Photoshop document. Uh, little did you know, I'm also a car salesman. Just kidding. Uh, anyway, so uh, I've prepared this and um, each layer is going to be uh, exported as its own actor on stage. Um, Glory uses the, the word actors as a convention because um, actors go on stage. Theoretically, you could have uh, a smart object for each one of these layers. So if you uh, wanted to edit these individual parts, then uh, that would be a good way to keep all your assets in check. So um, 
in the Git repo, there's uh, two scripts which are designed to work with Photoshop. And uh, when you install them, they'll appear in here. One is export layers of glory files. The other is export glory layout XML. I'm gonna run this one. And uh, you'll see this is uh, based on one of the out of the box things with Photoshop. So I'll just run it. Takes a few seconds, it's generating some transparent pings. It's too bad it doesn't play background music when it's doing that. Um, I'll maybe get uh, Simon and Fina to provide that next time I do such a demo. It's almost done. It's gonna do a beach ball and then it'll tell me a little a little happy message saying it's uh, it's all worked out fine. There. So uh, after doing that, uh, you can see it's uh, in that same folder, it's generated uh, these numbered files uh, for each of the assets. And uh, as I was preparing this, uh, I decided, well, it'll keep it more organized if I keep it in a folder within assets. So uh, I've just copied those in there. So uh, that's, that's ready to use. And uh, the other step is uh, I'll run the XML output. And I'm just gonna delete my old one. XML goes pretty quickly. There. So when I open that, there it is back there. It's output one page, which is uh, tells Glory Framework how to load those assets and where to position it on page. Now, so when I paste it into the config file for Glory, uh, it'll be this section here. And I've added the home folder to these uh, asset locations. And I will do a quick compile here. Wow, you guys are dancing all around. There we go. There. When that's done compiling, I'll load it up in uh, in the browser. Okay. So my glory demo. Right after first compile, I promise you this is going to work. There. So. All these are the separate assets. Now, as you can see, uh, you know, OpenFL by default is taking up the whole browser window. Uh, so this isn't quite as pretty as, uh, as you might want. So uh, with that in mind, I also uh, included support for uh, the advanced layout library for OpenFL. And I've made it so that you can, uh, call the functions in advanced layout by uh, entering it in, into this layout attribute for each one of these actors. So you, normally that's blank on first export when you generate the XML, but uh, so I'll met, I manually added those things. And then when, uh, When it goes into the XML file, and incidentally, I'm editing the uh, deployment version of the XML, so I'm not going to recompile. So uh, now that that's in there, it'll uh, lay out more nicely. And uh, so it, it has some behaviors that are built into the advanced layout library. So that's a nice 
out of the box way to uh, do your layouts. Um, however, I've, I found that uh, for that uh, kitchen design tool project, uh, I required a little more robust um, layout, uh, something that would behave a little bit more like HTML. So I used the Feathers UI library for that. Worked really well. Now, uh, obviously a website uh, isn't usually a single page. So um, if we were to go back to here and put something in our controls section up here, I'm just gonna copy that into controls. Now this will give me the ability to see little arrows there. So those controls are on the left and right at the bottom. And uh, that makes other pages available. Now, as, as I mentioned, uh, it supports SVG graphics. So uh, on the second page, if I click on this, oh, Right, I just added the controls, didn't add the second page yet. Going back. So there's page two. You can see it uh, just pass it a path to an SVG. Stick it in there and reload. Now, um, by default, it uh, has transitioning. Um, so there's page classes, and uh, by default, they will fade out, fade in, and then uh, it loads my SVG. Now, uh, this is a pretty simple page so far. Um, so I'm gonna sh demo uh, adding a custom page class. So if I go into my main class, uncomment this, uh, you can see I've created this custom page class. And uh, it looks like this. So in, in Glory, there's page components. So you just extend it. You can override its init function and also its transition in and transition out if you desire. Uh, this will require a recompile. You're still not singing, you guys. Sure, Alexander is used to uh, compile times. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> Anyway, uh, fun story. I, I always I always add this uh, to the end of my uh, terminal commands because then my Mac OS will yell out, it's done. That way I can go browse Twitter while it's compiling and uh, I'll hear that it's done. Okay, it's finished now. So if I reload this page, um, you'll see that I added a simple animation using Actuate. Oh, hey, you know what happened? It took my original assets file from, from there. So I'll just uh, replace that. Going back. There we go. So yeah, it's... Uh, Fairly tolerant of um, you know not making you recompile every time. So if you make a screw up like I just did, then it'll uh, just let you swap out the XML and go from there. Now I'm trying to think of what other interesting features there are. Um, the actual uh, website demo. Uh, 
which is included in the repository, it, uh, it demonstrates some of the different uh, actor types that are available. Um, so there's, you can load a bitmap, you can load a Swift file or an SVG. You can also uh, in the XML, configure it directly to uh, generate a text field and uh, pass styling information to that. Uh, so that also is a useful tool. And uh, in future, I intend to make that uh, integrate so that you can have a bit of search engine optimization. Um, haven't quite figured out the tech for that. I think it will involve uh, having uh, the generated PHP file uh, load that up and pass it to uh, search engines instead of the actual application. Now, I think I may be done my demo. So if uh, anyone has any questions, uh, please, please go ahead. All right. So we have one question here from Jeff Wood who asks, What's the three? First of all, he said, cool. Um, Thanks, Jeff. I'm going to literally add an exclamation point or two to that. Um, and then he asks, what's the 3D rendering framework? OA 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent a lot of time deciding what 3D uh, engine to use. Um, I And the, the client had um, a bunch of models in SketchUp and SketchUp has the ability to export in a number of formats and uh, the, 3D, the 3D engines available for hex have the ability to import in a number of formats. So I, I looked at Away 3D, I looked at uh, Heaps 3D, also thought about using ex externs with 3JS. Uh, and anyway, I did a lot of experimentation and uh, not every, not all uh, the engines uh, are able to import just every flavor uh, of those things too. Sometimes you can export a Collada file and one, one engine will think it's just great and another engine won't be able to do anything with it. Uh, Heaps 3D was really good with FBX format. Um, in the end, I chose Away 3D because there were so many other uh, OpenFL libraries that I really wanted to use, including Glory Framework. And uh, it was really good at loading Collada files. So uh, that's what we ended up doing. And the Collada files uh, get processed through Blender after exporting from SketchUp. And then, thank you, Alex, uh, the first, third, and second, I don't know. Alex asks, does it have any built-in way to control the app from another JS code loaded in the same page? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, right now, it's uh, pretty standalone. I think uh, if you used some of your exposed metadata in a in a clever way, you could likely uh, trigger things. I'm sure right. Simon could comment on that better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's possible. <laughs> oh, uh, one interesting thing I wanted to mention is that uh, in that uh, XML, uh, well, I, I showed you the controls area. And so you can load up assets, use them as controls, and then uh, in the XML, you can define the uh, behavior when that thing gets clicked. So there's some built-in functions for just page changes. And uh, you can summon an overlay if you want, which is basically just a special, another page basically. Um, but I made it so that you can also uh, pass in a signal to pure MDC. Uh, I don't think I mentioned before that uh, compiled into Glory is the pure MVC framework, which is a lot like uh, massive MVC. Uh, the signaling part is slightly different, but uh, it's pretty easy to use. Anyway, in the XML, uh, 
if you're building an application and and you're you're adding some listeners for certain notifications, uh, then in, in the XML, you can tell a certain button in Glory to call that special function. And that's what I'm doing on that RTA kitchen designer. Uh, the buttons at the top are defined in Glory and they, they call a command called do navigation. And that's where my uh, logic is contained that decides whether you are actually allowed to switch pages. Because mm -hmm. like if I start at step one and I try to click on the 3D renderer, the program is going to say, no, you can't do that because you haven't selected this layout. You haven't selected yeah. all your appliances and so forth. So uh, yeah, it uh, that's a very useful uh, feature that helps helps glory help you in in uh, creating your web application it sounds like super neat actually <laughs> um all right all right let's see yeah i think that was it i have one last question myself actually um so how is it that you are using hacks now like how did that come about tell us the story of how you first met Okay, you don't remember my talk from 2018? I do, but <laughs> like not everybody else does. Right. <laughs> I understand, I just like to tease. Uh, <laughs> I was working as, a, well, I was trained as a graphic designer, but I really got into uh, multimedia stuff and eventually got hired as a Flash developer within a fairly large company. And uh, I was doing that a lot, but the... Uh, you know, I was familiar with the MTask compiler that uh, Nicholas had uh, built for ActionScript 2. And I was curious whether he was going to build something for AS3. And lo and behold, he decided to build his own language. And I thought that was neat. So I kept my eye on that. And uh, when the it seemed apparent that Flash was not going to last forever, I uh, kept opening my eyes wider and wider at hacks thinking, yeah, this could be a good replacement tool. And then uh, later on, uh, when I started my own business, an opportunity came up to convert an existing Flash application to HTML5. Um, and as I was mentioning to you guys this morning, um, it instead, <laughs> at the time, NME, which is the ancestor of OpenFL, uh, was not that great for HTML5. OpenFL didn't even exist, uh, but there was a library called ESL.js, which uh, I was able to rope in. So I converted my ActionScript code to hex. I swapped out the view with uh, ESL.js and I used externs to call that. I uh, used jQuery for other stuff too to get, of all things, an odometer, a graphic odometer. <laughs> for that. And, but Hex was great. It just, uh, you know, I could compile my app and uh, it would call anything else I needed from JavaScript world and it worked really good. So after that point, uh, I went all in on Hex. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a lot of time to learn kajillions of other languages. And, uh, you know, we've talked about Hex being the one language to rule them all. And uh, it's certainly been that for me. So uh, yeah, I've, I tend to use it primarily for uh, in-browser applications um, of various sorts. Uh, yeah, right after that, I, I, uh, I used it in combination with some other libraries for a government of Canada shelter belt design tool with, uh, that was an interesting one and uh, built interactive maps uh, with it. And yeah, so uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And it's just, just keeps getting better and better. So it's a safe bet in my view. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I, I started in Hex uh, back in, well, I, I mentioned I had my eyes on it. Uh, well, it was, it was right at its uh, inception, really. Uh, so 
2008 about I I was watching it and started actually using it in about 2010 or so and uh, that's all down downhill from there that's wonderful all right thank you so much thank you so much for also like coming on and um, speaking up and putting up with my <laughs> <laughs> with my everything thank you so much all right then we're going to move on yeah i'm, I'm going to move on yeah hang on we'll be right back in like 30 seconds or something